<laughs> hello, hello. Hello. I was a bee and I'm also a bee. I don't know. So, okay. So a little bit of clearance. Um, I lost, not, not, I lost the plot. I, um, when Jimmy left, I went back and played Skyward Sword and <laughs> I went through the file, our uh, save file. So some things may be different, it may look the same for a little things, um, but there are some cautions I'm going to take. I changed my name. To 00110? Yeah. To anyone who's curious, we will not answer what that is meant for. I don't even know either. Hey, 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 you missed with that turf and you're gonna pay. Whoa, you're not. Oh, I don't think this oh, is. These guys, oh, I remember there being a pain in the ass to deal it's with. It's Takeshi69 and Little Pump. What? Let's get it. These monsters, hurry, <laughs> messing with our turf. They show up here and I'm gonna knock the bitch. Yeah, you got that? Yeah, whatever you're doing here, there in the dark. Anyway, if you're looking for church, you should take clear the big guy. Thanks, man. Can you call them? I guess not. Nope, you cannot. Okay. So this is gonna be a little harder because I don't think it's necessary to have a shield. Um, More or less, your shield will literally get burned. Yes. Right here. And I feel like it's not really worth it to waste money on a. Uh, I don't really feel like it's necessary to waste money on another shield. You mean a wooden shield? Of all things? Or, no, on the metal shield. Oh, okay. Because, yeah, because there's another that we can get that I'm not going to spoil. <coughs> Yo, when we get to boss battles, take as long as possible. <laughs> Why? <laughs> so when we... We can, we can kill them in two minutes. <laughs> okay, no, let's take a little bit longer Okay, that. just so build long. up the suspense? Mm, maybe. Okay. Here we go. Are we really allowed to talk about uh, end game or like near end game stuff? I mean, this game is already six. This game, <laughs> this game is already six years old. So actually, I'm not sure. But not the issue. You know, no, but when we do the Thunder God challenge, you know, you gotta beat your previous boss times. Yeah, the Thunder God. Yeah, I don't want to bother with that. So let's just like burn as much time here, so that we don't have to like do that jazz. Okay. Make sense. I guess so, but at the same time, we could go for the Hylian shield. We just have to kill nine bosses. That's it. Ah! Hylian shield. It's the best shield in the game. Isn't the best shield in the game the one that you get from the Thunder God? Yeah, that's the Hylian. Wait, but you gotta do the challenge, don't you? Yeah. It's yeah. only it's only nine bosses you have to kill. Yeah, but you gotta kill it within the time limit, which is like faster than your previous time. No, there's no time limit. No. Nah. You just have to kill them. Wait, there, no, there's no correlation with that, because, yeah, they you're not under time for killing the boss. You just, it's just setting a world record for how fast you kill them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because if I were to kill this in under forty seconds and I got lucky, then bubble. Oh my- Yay! Lost the heart! Okay. Man, these are pretty fucking good. You know it. Oh, this is a little iffy. On a chair of all things. I guess. Yeah, the cookies from Costco are pretty good. They're my favorite. But, after- I think I'm, I'm one of those people that if I take too much of something, I start- Depreciating the value of it. Yeah, it's like when you go to, uh, say, Disney World or Universal Studios. It's the first time you're there, it's fun. And then as you keep going on, if you get, say, an annual pass and you just keep going, then you start losing that uh, value towards the journey of going there. I'm sure and experiencing. it's the uh, same with most people. Some people have higher tolerance than others. I, also, yeah. May I just mention yeah? that after taking animation and movement studio <laughs> classes, I feel like <laughs> that fucking high, uh, goddess cubes, you just take the sprite, turn it on an angle, and then put it below the ground. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> That's what it feels like, and that's what it looks like to me. That's exactly what they did. <laughs> <laughs> just thinking about it, swear it. Just like... <laughs> Throw it! Oh, phew, that was close. You get to see their dead bodies if you're fast enough. Never mind. 
That wasn't fast enough. But as we start, I feel like as we start growing older... I need to stop these things are actually addicting. Oh god, they hit me. While Amigo yes. is playing a game, I'm being a glutton. No, there's nothing wrong with being gluttonous once in a while. What if it's every <laughs> every time a while? Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, about that. Yee, make it. So, sometimes the I find out I find out there's a little bit of a difference with um. So there's two different types for the Wii Motion. There's the ones that are already built in, and the ones that are um. And the ones that you have to connect manually. The ones that are built in are more responsive. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't blow it up. Thank you. Because and also it it feels less clunky when you do it. Oh my god. If you yeah, it just feels less clunky when you um. Yay! That's two hearts now from bombs. <laughs> two hearts from bombs. Didn't people hate this game because of the bomb mechanic? No, that was the. I don't think so. That was that was one of their best moves. I wish they brought it back, honestly. Um, I think it was just because it wasn't very responsive with a lot of people, and I think it's just because of their personal experiences and the environment that they played in. Like over here, I can't play because there's so much blocking this. But if I were to be in a more open space, like my other setup, then I would have been fine playing. What happens when you go on the bone bridge? Nothing. You just have to run as fast as possible. No. Oh. Uh, please. This so doesn't that mean you can go like a quarter way off to the bone bridge, throw it, and then come back? <laughs> no, it's gonna sink. Nice, man! Whee! Now it'll drown. <laughs> now we kill the non-believers. <laughs> <laughs> that took longer than anybody needed to. Mm -hmm. But hey. Oh! D p sh shit beetles! Ringo! I'm kidding. I love Ringo. <laughs> If you ever used Atlas, the animation pro Have you taken animation and movement? Atlas? Mm -hmm. Atlas. It's a animation and program. Animation and movement program. I use Daz 3D. But I'm learning to use Daz 3D. And I have other programs that were connected to it. Yeah, I, use, I asked Atlas because I'm, that's the one that my class used. And uh, the Beatles. Inside the insect column. Uh, the band, the Beatles, is actually like a category. Really? Yeah, and there's like a... Uh, what was it? There's like an individual beetle for each member of the Beatles. Oh, that's cool. Mm hmm Do they have one for Pete Best? No. Darn it. But who is he? He was the first drummer of the Beatles. Oh, before. what happened? Um... I don't know personally because... Oh, I mean, I don't know... I don't know how he is as a drummer, but the other... The other members thought he was lousy as a drummer. Especially John Lennon. Which hmm. is why they replaced him with Ringo. Did they know Ringo before replacing him? Yeah, they did. They they saw he used to be in a band called Rory and the Hurricanes, and I think he was the most popular member of that group. So they just siphoned off the most popular member of the group. Um, no, they they tried a session with him, and because Ringo had perfect tempo, and because he was able to do his own thing, they they wanted him because even though he comes off as um. Even though Ringo comes off as jokey, when the Beatles first met him, they were intimidated. Really? Yeah, that, that's how good he was. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. I keep burping. Why is it that every time I talk about a fact or something serious, I always burp? Well, that's how the viewers know it's a fact. You burp. <laughs> yeah, you burped again. Another fact. You take the moon, and you take the... Okay. Enron! <laughs> Do you know what Enron is? Mm, what is that? It's like one of the worst companies that were ever <laughs> created in the history of the world. Enron? Yeah, Enron. If I remember properly, it's like a stocks company. I'm not too sure about the specifics. <laughs> what did they do? They like crashed <laughs> the market. <laughs> That's how I like memorized Enron. How long? <laughs> How long ago was this? Oh, it wasn't that long ago either. Was it just... Was it two months ago? Was that the reason? No, that's way too like, oh. early. 
Was it during 2008's housing crisis? I don't know. <laughs> Give me a second, let me look up information about Enron. Okay. <laughs> Enron. I'm sure there are others who know much more about this than I do. But I had to um, learn about this a while back. Enron Corporation was an American energy commodities and service company based in Houston, Texas. It was founded in 1985 as a meager between Houston Natural Gas and Internorth, both relatively small region regional companies. Before its bankruptcy on December 3rd, 2001, Enron employed, employed, uh, employed approximately 29,000 staff and was a major electricity, natural gas, communications, and pulp and paper company. Wow. Mm -hmm. So what exactly did they? Blah 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 blah. blah. Entrepreneur, natural gas, meager post, post meager timelines. Blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. Ah, uh, misleading financial accounts. <laughs> well. <laughs> huh. In 1990, Enron's chief operational officer. Jeffrey Skilling hired Andrew Fast Fasto, who was well acquainted with the burgeoning deregulated energy market that Skilling wanted to exploit. In 1993, Fasto began, began establishing numerous limited liability special purpose entities a common business practice in the energy industry. However, it also allowed Enron to transfer liability so that it would not appear in its accounts allowing wow. it to maintain a robust and generally increasing stock prices and thus keeping its critical investment grade credit rating. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I told you Enron is pretty down there. They're, um... There's another... Do you want to search up Rick James? Give me a second, let me like, clean up my glasses a little bit. <laughs> Rick James was the writer of Super Freak, the beat behind Can't Touch This. Um, but <laughs> there's a lot of cases on him if you search him up. Look well up. Um, Rick James. Rick James? There's a kidnapping. I mean, yeah, there's a... That's one thing. There was, he oh, no, crazy curly hair? Yeah. Search up his wiki and like, legal problems. Wikipedia. <laughs> Oh god! Can we just talk about the man who, after dropping his keys into fucking lava, didn't give up on the keys and apparently tried getting it? Yeah. <laughs> I forget his name already, but great man. Rick James, blah blah blah, born and raised Buffalo, blah blah blah, Toronto, Burr's Mall Town Records in 19, blah blah blah. Born, died, genres, occupation. I wish an occupation. <laughs> Did he do anything illegal? Yeah. Okay, now I wish an occupation. Recording artist, songwriter, musician, dancer, band leader, record producer, and criminal. It's <laughs> <laughs> not a wish just on the list. Criminal's not on the oh, list. Oh, I thought you actually. <laughs> no, 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 Criminal's not on the list. If it was, that'd be hilarious. And criminal. <laughs> but, um. Instruments, vocals, bass, guitar, keyboards, drums. Other percussion instruments and crowbar. <laughs> so fucking with you. Take it. Years active, 1965 to 1990, and 1996 to 1998 and 2004. Now, if you're curious what those guests were for, it was his criminal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, what are the things about him? Let me find the early life careers. Solo career, personal life, relationships, relationships, and children. James had two children, blah blah blah. Former songwriter, James dated actress, blah blah blah, and met 17 year old. Two became a romance in 1990s, and in 1993, the couple became. There's nothing illegal. Drugs, abuse, and health. Yeah, problems. do you want to leave? Kidnapping is so conviction! Yeah, can you read the oh! whole thing? Yeah, of course. Give me like two seconds to like calm my nerves down for a second. <laughs> Thank you. Ow! Ooh, got anyway. some hot fire. All right, drugs abuse and health problems. James's drug abuse began in his teens, first with Mary Jane and heroin. 
James began using cocaine in his late 1960s. His cocaine use became an addiction in the in 1980s. <laughs> Yo, that's 20 years of using and then becoming addicted. Yo, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> and he began uh, freebasing. Freebasing? The fuck is that? I forgot. Freebasing. Freebase or freebase. In the conjugate of the anime. Amen. And nine, post. Fuck it, I don't understand what the fuck that means. By the end of the decade, James recalled smoking crack cocaine in his Beverly Hills mansion and often had aluminum foil on the windows to escape onlookers. <laughs> this motherfucker put tin foil on all his windows in his motherfucking mansion to get away from the eyes of peering uh, people. <laughs> This man is crazy! <laughs> his drug use led to health problems that affected his life. By April 1982, he was hospitalized after being found unconscious in the middle of his house by a friend. James stated that he quit cocaine when he entered prison, although his autopsy determined that he was a small amount of drug in his bloodstream that time of death. Oh my god. Whew. Oh, well, I got it. What's that? For a second, I had something that I want to say about this man, but then I completely forget. Uh, hmm. Whatever. On to the next one. Kidnapping. There's a part about final years. Kidnapping and assault, con assault convictions. By the beginning of the 1990s, James's drug drugs James's drug use was public knowledge. He was mainly addicted to cocaine, and later admitted spending about seven thousand per week Whoa. on drugs for five years straight. Dude, that's like a lot. Like I don't even need to do the math, and I can just instantaneously tell that that's a lot. Yeah. Uh, five years straight. In 1991, he and his future wife, the blah blah blah, were accused of holding 24-year-old Francis Alley hostage up for six days, although accounts vary on how long she was actually held. Tying her up, forcing her to perform sexual acts, and burning her legs and abdomen with the hot end of a crack <laughs> cocaine pipe during a week-long cocaine binge. In 1993, while out on, out on bail for the incident, James, under the influence of cocaine, assaulted music executive Mary Sauger at the St. James Club and Hotel in West Hollywood. Sager claims she met James and blah 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 for a business meeting but said the two of them kidnapped and beat her over, <laughs> over a 20 hour period. He kidnapped two people. Oh my god. Damn dude. Huh. Dude, I never knew this man was this crazy. <laughs> I didn't know he kidnapped two people. That was pretty crazy. I only heard of the one. James was found guilty of both offenses, but was cleared of a torture charge. What? And the crack pipe incident that could have put him in prison for the rest of his life. He served two years in Folsom prison, prison, and lost a civil suit to Sauger, who awarded who was awarded two million. He was released from prison in 1996. In 1998. James was accused of sexually assaulting a 26-year-old oh woman. Oh my god. The charges, the charges were dropped later. Oh my god, Rick James. I didn't know about the second kidnapping. <laughs> okay, Jesus. so it's death. On the morning of August 6, 2004, James's caretaker found him dead in James's Los Angeles home at Oakwood Toluca Hills apartment complex. Just outside... Bank. He had died from pulmonary failure and cardiac failure. Dude, that's pretty fucking horrible. Yeah. Associated with his various health conditions of diabetes, a stroke, pacemaker, <laughs> and heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> Why, are you that's Why are you giggling? Because it's like four different issues, and yet he still did fucking drugs. Uh, that's crazy. This man is like fucking. He has diabetes, don't know which type. Either way, both still bad. He also has, like, I guess multiple accounts of stroke. He also has a pacemaker. 
keeping his heartbeat, as well as a uh, uh, heart attack. Yeah. Yeah, no. We're kind of. I'll be serious. Like health conditions are no laughing matter, but like this man, he needs to stop. Like he's he's like I know he's dead, but like seriously. Yeah, there were too many issues, and he already he just kept going. Yeah, like don't. Like that's what I'm laughing about. Like he never stopped. Yeah. Like I I'm not laughing right. at the health issues. Like I think the health issues are like a big issue. His autopsy found. Fuck, this is a lot of medical terms that I can't read. <laughs> Alpazolan diazapam bupropin. May I? <laughs> yeah, go for this entire line of blue. Okay. Yeah. I think it's Alprazolan diazapam. There's a problem for propane. Stop Sorry, showing off your pronunciation skills! <laughs> I'm just screwing it up. Hydrocodon dioxin chlor. Wait. Chlorphen. Really? Met methamphetamine and cocaine in his blood. However, the coroner stated that none of the drugs or drug combinations were found to be at levels that were like. So he was just taking them at small amounts then? He was probably trying to keep, like, uh. get back to, like, his regular level. Because if you didn't know, like, uh. The idea behind like drug use is um, a person's oh. tolerance increases, and as it increases, like if you go back down, you just like don't go back to normal, but you go far, far below normal. So you gotta keep on taking that drug to feel back up to oh, like regular yeah. and normal levels. For instance, let's say you start off early in your life taking dopamine, and you slowly gradually go up to like fucking six pounds of dope mm -hmm. per day. I don't know how much dope can be taken before it's fucking considered deadly. <laughs> so let's just use this as an example, and hypothetically speaking, a person cannot die in this situation. So his tolerance is like at 5 pounds of dope per day. But then if he s like slowly scales it down, or like completely stops, let's just get rid of fucking, uh... What was it called when you suddenly stop? Withdrawal? Yeah. Let's just not talk about withdrawal symptoms. Actually, no, that is a withdrawal symptom, but like withdrawal and like failure of all that jazz. Then like your tolerance from... Your body like slowly decreases the amount of dopamine it naturally produces, and so, it, like if you take away what you've been like supplementing to your brain, your brain produces like six grams, let's say six grams of dope, and then it decreases to like two grams of dope. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're taking the five pounds of coke, you're basically supplementing that to feel normal or a high, but then when you stop, you go back down to those six. Uh, down to those two grams of dope in your entire system, meaning that you're lacking a uh, total amount of dope to make you feel normal. Which I'm not sure if that can be reversed or not. I've actually never looked that deep into that, um, which can become an issue. I'm not sure if it can be reversed, but I heard people say that um, there was a quote by Frank Sinatra that said, um, "I feel bad for people who don't drink because that's as high as they're getting today." That's then I'd rather keep that neutrality rather than sink so low that I feel like nothing and I have to hurt my body just to get feel somewhere. Again. Yeah. Totally. Next time. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> yeah, we, we went through 23 minutes. <laughs> That's a long episode. We've been making like a lot of long episodes recently. Uh, yeah. Damn, Whatever. man. <laughs> this is fun. Yeah, facts. Facts. <laughs> Facts and knowledge. Alright, we'll see you. Dog breeds. <laughs>